Welcome to the 2023 Limited Permit Compliance Training. This training is mandated by the Minnesota Department of Agriculture in order to comply with federal regulations. Limited permits cannot be issued without this training. My name is Deb Davis Hudak and I'll be your narrator for this training. Here is a brief overview of the topics we'll be covering today. The name gypsy moth is no longer being used. The Entomological Society of America has adopted spongy moth as the new common name. The name refers to the insect's distinctive sponge-like egg masses and is derived from translations of common names used for the insect in its native range in Europe and French-speaking Canada. First, let's have some background information on spongy moth. Spongy moth was introduced into the United States in the late 1800s near Boston, Massachusetts. 150 years later, spongy moth has spread to the central United States. Looking at this map, the dark blue represents where spongy moth is currently quarantined. The light green area represents the slow the spread zone where moth count numbers are monitored. Lake and Cook counties are currently the only counties quarantined in Minnesota since July 2014. Since 1980, spongy moth has defoliated over 1 million acres of forest each year. By 2011, this insect was causing an estimated 900 million in annual damages in the United States. This affects the timber industry, tourism, and the average homeowner in the area. This image depicts an aerial view of defoliation, which can result in devastated forested lands. Spongy moth feeds on over 300 species of trees and shrubs. Caterpillar feeding on leaves doesn't directly kill trees. The compounded stress makes them more susceptible to drought, disease, or insects, which can then cause mortality. Let's discuss spongy moth life cycle. There are four stages to the life cycle. Egg masses are the single life stage most likely to be encountered. However, the caterpillar or larvae stage is the most damaging. Egg mass presence is the most significant life stage because it can be laid anywhere and sit for nearly a year. Female moths lay their eggs in large, tan, fuzzy clumps that are spongy-like to the touch. Each egg mass is around one and a half inches long and contains 500 to 1,000 eggs. This picture gives you an idea of how well they blend into the bark. The older the egg mass, the lighter it becomes. Eggs must be kept warm and dry before hatching. Females prefer to deposit their eggs in hidden places. Egg masses are commonly found in cracks of trees, under roof eaves, log piles, rock walls, wheels of vehicles, and seen here even under picnic tables. Females cover their egg masses with a layer of velvety, tan-colored hair pulled from their bodies. These hairs protect the eggs from harsh winter temperature swings. 500 to 1,000 caterpillars can emerge from a single egg mass. Emergence from egg masses typically occur in June in northern Minnesota, depending upon weather conditions. There is an approximate four-week time delay from southern versus northern Minnesota. Emerging caterpillars on the left are black and barely a quarter inch in size. Immediately after hatching, the hunt for food is on. In northern Minnesota, that means early June to August. Spongy moth have a yellow capsule head followed by five rows of blue dots and six pairs of red dots. These distinct identifying signs don't appear until they're about two inches in size. A full-grown caterpillar can be as large as your index finger. Spongy moth has a very limited natural spread rate. Because female moths can't fly, their only means of natural spread is by the caterpillar crawling to vegetation and emitting, emitting a silk thread to move across the canopy. Wind gusts can transport them up to one and a quarter mile away. 
Birds don't find them very attractive to eat as their hairs can be long and irritating. Hatching time is temperature dependent and this life stage lasts about 40 days. When trees are continually stressed, they become susceptible to other pests such as our native boars or diseases. A healthy stand of deciduous trees can recover from defoliation, often sending out another smaller flush of leaves. This added stress won't kill them if they're healthy and not droughts, diseased, or insect stressed. Tree mortality rises after two consecutive years of being defoliated. Evergreens never recover after defoliation. Caterpillars can consume up to one square foot of leaves in a day. 70% of their feeding occurs in the later growth larvae stage as they bulk up before pupation stage. At this size, leaves can be stripped overnight. Once caterpillars have moved on from eating, they enter the pupa stage. This life stage is very short-lived, lasting only about two weeks. You may never see this life stage. Pupa is singular and pupae is plural. Birds and small rodents may prey upon this stage more than any other but it's not a significant impact to thwart populations. Adult moths emerge approximately two weeks after pupation occurs. The male moth pictured here on the left is approximately one and a half inches in size, and the female, white and on the right side, is notably larger at two and a half inches in size. The male moth can typically fly up to one and a half miles searching for a female. He locates her simply by the pheromones she releases. Other than the comma-like marks, the real identifier is the feathered antenna. Males are day flyers and not attracted to light. Neither moth feeds as they have no mouth parts. Because females are much larger, her body weight prevents flight. If picked up, she will merely fall to the ground due to her body mass. Her whole life is confined to the area she's laying egg masses. She also has the distinct comma marks. Again, having no mouth parts, she will not feed during her lifetime and soon dies after laying eggs. We'll discuss the major food sources of Northern Minnesota. The spongy moth caterpillar will consume over 300 species and become a generalist feeder of any healthy deciduous tree. In northern Minnesota, that preference is aspen, birch, and oak. Willow and basswood are also preferred. While pine are less preferred, they are high risk because they will not recover once defoliated. Commonly confused insects. In this picture, you can see that slightly yellow head followed by the five pairs of blue dots, six pairs of red dots. The other eight images are other caterpillars you may encounter. Spongy moths do not make white cocoons. Spongy moths do not make tents. They also do not feed in the fall. State and federal agencies collaborate in a national integrated pest management program called Slow the Spread Program to reduce the spread rate of spongy moth and limit its impact. Slow the Spread is one of the world's largest and most successful integrated pest management programs. Spongy moth can easily be transported from areas of infestation to areas of non-infestation several miles ahead of the advancing front. Adult females will lay their eggs on virtually any type of outdoor household article. RVs and campers, wheel wells of vehicles, tarps, buildings, to firewood and nursery stock. Human activity has increased the natural spread from one and a quarter miles a year to approximately 15 miles per year. Minnesota partners with USDA APHIS, the Forest Service, and 11 states located along the population front to slow its spread from the eastern United States. 
When isolated populations are identified through annual survey programs, treatment projects are implemented to either eradicate or suppress spongy moth. This partnership has reduced spread by more than 60% and prevented infestation of more than 140 million acres in the past 15 years. Again, the goal is to slow it down. Regulations are in place in the quarantine to reduce the spread to uninfested areas. Part of those regulations include training such as this. In the transition zone, we work to slow the spread with mating disruption treatments. If isolated populations are identified in the uninfested zone, the goal is to eradicate using a bacterial spray called Bacillus thuringiensis carstachii, or simply referred to as BTK. BTK is a naturally occurring soil bacterium. When sprayed on leaves and consumed by spongy moth, it disrupts their digestion, causing death. BTK is commonly used by organic vegetable farmers up to the day of harvest. You may have seen these traps. The MDA has been setting about 20,000 of them annually. The inside of the trap is sticky and has a pheromone attractant so that male moths can be detected. Traps are set in the spring, checked in the summer, and removed in the fall. Lake and Cook County joined the federal spongy moth quarantine in July of 2014. The map shows the results from the 2022 spongy moth survey. Roughly 100,000 moths were caught statewide. 70% of those were caught in Lake and Cook County. These side-by-side -side maps show a significant westward movement. Note the darker pink areas where spongy moth counts have risen dramatically. There was little to no pink area in northeastern Minnesota until 2022. The Minnesota Department of Agriculture is proposing to treat approximately 26,000 acres in St. Louis and Carleton County in the summer of 2023. Spongy moth is a serious invasive forest pest that requires a quarantine to slow its spread. This federal quarantine limits the movement of certain items out of a designated area and can be weather dependent of the winter before. Quarantine is a tool in managing and slowing movement across the United States and Minnesota. Again, in Minnesota, Lake and Cook counties were added in July 2014. If you are interested in hauling from Wisconsin to Minnesota, you'll need to reach out to USDA and obtain a federal compliance agreement. Regulated articles can be moved within the quarantine. You cannot move out of the quarantine without proper certification. Quarantine violations occur when companies or individuals transport regulated articles out of the quarantine area without the proper appropriate documentation and can result in civil or criminal, criminal penalties. All life stages of spongy moth are regulated, pulpwood and nursery stock, logs, firewood, bark, and bark products are all regulated and any other means. Minnesota has an active public relations campaign for signage brochures and a checklist on our MDA website to educate travelers and homeowners about this spreading pest. Movement in Minnesota. There are two documents in which to travel out of a quarantine. A limited permit has the least responsibility associated with it. The receiver accepts all of the responsibility. Saw bolts, pulpwood, and bark for fuel must be accompanied by a limited permit when leaving spongy moth quarantined areas. Accurate statements are used when you have a compliance agreement and the receiver has a compliance agreement. Sometimes the word treatment can be confusing. The definition here pertains to inspection. To repeat, the limited permit is the travel document for transporting pulpwood, saw bolts, and bark for fuel to a receiving facility. The responsibility under the limited permit falls to the receiving facility. 
They agree to processing requirements that minimize the risk of introductions at their site. Under their compliance agreement, they agree to treat any infestations at their site as a result of handling regulated materials. Under state and federal guidelines, you must attend training such as this to obtain this permit. These items travel under a limited permit, only if going directly to an approved receiving facility. This approval means that they maintain a current compliance agreement with MDA and accept 100% full responsibility. It is important that you check with the facility in which you plan to transport pulpwood, saw bolts, or biomass to assure that they are under an MDA compliance agreement prior to your transporting regulated materials. Blandon, Boise, Minnesota Power, Potlatch, Deltic, Sappy, and Savannah Pallet are the only pulpwood, saw bolt, and bark for fuel receiving facilities that you can deliver to using a limited permit. Businesses with a pulpwood, saw bolt, receiving compliance agreement accept the risk and mitigation responsibilities that come with spongy moth quarantine regulations. Under specific guidelines, best management practices, and standard operating procedures, the risk of spreading spongy moth is reduced. This high level of responsibility allows you to travel under a limited permit to their site. It's very important to accurately fill out your limited permit as the compliance agreement holder is periodically audited by state and federal officials. To recap, pulpwood requires a limited permit, leaving the quarantine going to a receiving mill with a compliance agreement. Saw bolts require a limited permit, leaving the quarantine going to a receiving mill with a compliance agreement. And bark for fuel going to a receiving mill with a compliance agreement. A limited permit must be filled out accurately and entirely. They expire annually on April 30th. DNR stubs or scale tickets are not acceptable. The deadline for limited permit application is April 25th. Please expect to receive your limited permit electronically. Again, a limited permit is used only when going to an approved receiving facility. An accurate statement is the travel documentation when you have a compliance agreement with MDA and wish to transport to a receiver that also has a compliance agreement. Both the transporter and the receiver must have compliance agreements. 100% visual inspection is required by both parties. Under an accurate statement, you can transport saw logs, firewood, and landscape mulch. Holiday greenery, nursery stock, interstate movement must all be under a compliance agreement. For interstate movement, you need to contact USDA. Here's an example of an accurate statement that accompanies loads of regulated material out of the quarantine to the specified receiving facility. Again, both parties have a compliance agreement here and the transporter is using the accurate statement to travel with. Mitigation occurs when both parties take on the responsibility that no spongy moth life stages are leaving the quarantine. These trainings are not just about paperwork. It's about the action or actions being taken and where the action is needed in the process. The long-term goal for all of us is to slow the spread and these protocols assist with that. Let's review. In summary, limited permits allow for the movement of pulpwood, saw bolts, and bark used for fuel and can only be received by Blandon, Boise, Minnesota Power, Potlatch Deltic, Sappy, and Savannah Pallet. Saw logs, firewood, and landscape mulch all require a compliance agreement and travel under an accurate statement. A limited permit is not valid here. Feel free to take a picture of this slide with your phone. It's a great reminder of what you need and for which regulated article requires which documentation. Once you have completed this training, there will be a short test your knowledge section. An application will then be sent to you. Once the application is returned to MDA, 
we will email your limited permit to you. Thank you for your patience on this matter. Please have applications to me by April 25th. Thank you for taking the time to complete this training. And if you have any questions, please contact me. For questions about interstate travel, please contact Marissa Bendixson at USDA.